The phase three trial has already started. It's a trial that will go over several months involving 30,000 individuals. We hope that as the time we get into the late fall and early winter, we will have, in fact, a vaccine that we can say would be safe and effective. On July 27th, the U.S. began one of the biggest steps towards combating novel coronavirus, clinical trial phase three. Patients enrolling in any trial are volunteers. They're not specifically chosen. I was always trying to think, what can I do to help in this pandemic? I can't be taking care of patients, but I wanted to get involved in, in doing something. I called up and, and said, can I, can I be part of it? Phase three is the last part of a series of steps in developing a vaccine, which has a standardized procedure. During the exploratory phase, heavy research is done to find an antigen, a foreign molecule that causes your body's immune system to make antibodies to try to kill it off. Typically, this antigen is a weakened or dead strain of the virus itself, and several hundred potential antigen candidates are found. Next comes the preclinical phase, where researchers use tissue in animals to test various antigens. If they don't produce proper antibodies or prove harmful to the subjects, the antigen is discarded as a potential vaccine candidate. Any antigen candidate that passes through preclinical phase then goes through clinical development, which itself is split into three phases. Phase one examines physical responses to antigens, phase two determines safety and proper dosing measurements, and phase three applies those safety measures to a large scale of patients. And each phase uses an increasing amount of test subjects. If an antigen passes phase three, its developer submits a license known as a biologics license application to the FDA. After approval, it officially becomes a vaccine, where it can undergo an optional fourth phase to further refine safety before major drug manufacturers create and supply to the public. This vaccine development process is the standard for all vaccines in the United States. In 1944, the United States Public Service Act was passed. It mandated that the federal government issues licenses for all biological products, including vaccines. But the vaccine process would be refined in 1954, after Cutter Laboratories accidentally distributed more than 200,000 vaccines with live polio viruses to the patients, causing thousands to contract polio symptoms in what became known as the Cutter Incident. I have been involved in many clinical trials. Most of the studies I've done have been in malaria vaccine development. With COVID-19, it is affecting more industrialized nations than malaria, but at the same time, we are seeing the economically disadvantaged individuals suffer uh, disproportionately um, from COVID-19. So this particular Moderna vaccine trial has a second vaccination four weeks after the first. Over seven days, they would complete a diary where they would tell us what their temperature is every day, how they're feeling, if they have any pain where the injection was given, if they feel fatigued or if they have any muscle pain. And then they're brought in three more times to check their immune response after that second vaccination. We're collecting information on COVID symptoms. If they're positive, then that counts as a case for the study. We have half of our individuals who get placebo and half who get the vaccine. None of the participants nor the investigators know who gets what. It's only the biostatisticians and actually the pharmacists who know who gets what. If everyone got the vaccine, you wouldn't really be able to differentiate whether it was the vaccine that was responsible for the outcome or whether there were other underlying factors. After a certain number of cases of COVID-19, we'll be looking at the data collected up to that time point to see what the efficacy numbers are. Decisions are made whether or not we need to publish the results and, and let folks know that, that we have something that really works well or if we have something that doesn't seem to work at all. Typical vaccine processes take around 10 to 15 years to properly develop. In COVID-19's case, reaching phase three has just taken a few months, which is the fastest the United States has ever produced a potential vaccine. But despite the accelerated timeline, scientists assure the public every possible safety precaution is being taken. We aren't sidestepping any of the safety parameters that we normally would look at as far as vaccine development. Good for many of the candidates that are in the pipeline right now, the safety results have been promising, as well as the immune response. Those two parameters allow us to accelerate to the next phase quickly because it's already been pre-planned and sites are already ready. The federal government is doing advanced purchases for the vaccine. So it is extremely unlikely 
that at least in the first round of things, you're going to see vaccines that some people can get and some people won't. We brought in someone who is an expert in supply chain and distribution, an Army General, General Perna, that's part of this Operation Warp Speed that has been developed. I think the American public should be assured that in the process of determining the safety and efficacy, the proper steps have been taken. If we can do just a little bit to, to just help save this world, save people in this world, then, then it's uh, probably the most important thing I could do, uh, I could do.